What's up, TJ from 3 Media Web here. Uh, Google just released a new update to their quality raters guide or quality evaluators guide. The SEO industry goes crazy anytime Google updates this document. So let's dive into some of the changes. First, you gotta know that this update seems to be all about news and journalism and publishing and trustworthiness, especially in the, the journalism space. They seem to be tackling the fake news thing head on, right? So let's look at how they're doing. So looking at section 2.3, Three. This is the Your Money, Your Life pages, Y-M-Y-L pages. They they looked, they added the section, they kind of broke this out. They used to combine news and government and that sort of thing into one block. They split those out so that news gets its own line, government gets its own line. And in both cases, they added language in there talking about how those, those types of pages need to be even more trustworthy. And they give you some examples of how to find if they are trustworthy. With news and current events, they basically say not everything has to be considered Y-M-Y-L. Y all the time. It's not all that important. This is things like local sports scores or something like that. It might be timely, but it's not necessarily a life or death kind of a thing. On the government side, they get pretty clear about what this means. They talk about being an informed citizenry. So this would be legal issues, voting issues, uh, government issues, things like that. They get pretty clear about what makes a trustworthy and a YMYL page in the government side of things. And actually, before we move on, there is one minor change in here about syndicated content on websites. It's got nothing to do with the journalism thing, although there might be some overlap there. In this case, they just update the language to, to talk about who is responsible for the quality of the content. So they're basically saying, even if you syndicate content, you are still responsible for the quality of it, even if you didn't write that content. It's not a change. They just clarify some of the language on that. All right, there's a section here about for the quality raters, the, the people behind this job to do research on the reputation of a website or a publisher, and they talk about how you might do that research, look into the reputation of a publisher. So if you're a publisher, this is relevant information because this is how Google is evaluating you and your reputation as a publisher. Here's how they do it. Again, this is addressed specifically at the newspaper industry or anybody that is gonna have a regular publication, but they talk about a newspaper with an associated website having an established history of original reporting. That is new language, the established history of original reporting was not in the quality raters guide before and it goes to show that they are looking for original information here not just repeating and analyzing it and you know kind of redoing work that's already been done there's also a lot new language on uh, relying on on awards and recognition within the industry to uh, derive some reputational analysis so uh, Pulitzer Prize winning awards have already been mentioned in the uh, in the quality raters but we added more references to the Pulitzer Prize also other awards like the overseas press Press Club Award, for example, uh, the Beard Award. There's a lot more awards given as examples for what could be a signal of reputation. They do branch out a little bit beyond just newspapers into blog articles, which of course is going to cover more, you know, more publishers across the web, more websites. So they talk about Pulitzer Prizes already, but when they get into the blog stuff, they also talk about the George Polk Award. Uh, after Polk, they talk about the Peabody Award or Peabody if you're not from New England like us. And they use those as examples to say that the author of the blog has become recognized as an industry expert. That language was already in there, but now they're citing the Polk and the Peabody Award as examples of that expertise. Under section 5.1, they talk about very high quality MC. Now in this document, MC stands for main content. So very high quality main content, section 5.1. And they added an entire block about news and broke that out from other types of websites. They compare that news to artistic content and informational content. These three definitions were not in the in 5.1 before now, but news is the biggest change, at least in my opinion. So let me tell you a little bit about the news changes in section 5.1. They say that the very high quality main content uh, for news sites is information that would not have been brought to light or not been known were it not for this article. So that's another way to say original reporting, right? This is something that you were first to do. And I'm gonna extend this beyond uh, newspapers into the blog stuff, this is where original uh, research and, you know, surveys and that kind of thing can be useful. If you've got the primary source on that information, that is what Google is considering to be very high quality main content. All right, under section 5.2, they, they go into a bit more about the news and also some medical and shopping websites. Medical and shopping, because they were money and life, right? YMYL, your money, your life. They already got a lot of explanation, a lot of kind of detail about what it takes to measure reputation. Google is adding 
saying. They're kind of doubling down on what journalism needs in order to review somebody's reputation. Evidence. So Google is adding uh, these into the column. They're saying uh, evidence from experts, from professional societies, or prestigious awards. Those are the three things Google highlights as a quality rater should be looking to evaluate the reputation of a publisher. So if you are a publisher, I know you know, not everybody's in journalism, but if you're a publisher, that's what you're looking for. Awards, recognition from professional societies and experts, they're really doubling down on the expertise and trustworthiness, that EAT measure. Under section 5.4, which is high quality websites, they list out a few other awards. Already we talked about Pulitzer, Peabody, and uh, the Under section 5.4, high quality content, they list out a few more awards. We already talked about Pulitzer and Peabody. It's here that they mention the James Beard Award and also the Scripps Howard Award. So those are in a lower level section underneath Peabody and Pulitzer, but they're still high quality. Those are still, you know, a measurement of, of great quality content. Section 5.4 goes on to talk a little bit more about magazine articles. This one, I think, might branch out a little bit more into regular publishers that aren't in journalism per se. Uh, and they talk about more original, kind of authoritative, comprehensive content. So they give an example of a music article in a, in a music type um, magazine where the reputation of the publisher, of the magazine itself, is one of having interviews with musicians and artists that are original, that it's just one-on-one -on -one with the magazine and the artist. Again, that's an original source of content. And again, they talk about more awards. In this case, they're talking about the National Magazine Award, which is right up there with, you know, Beard or Scripps Howard or some of the others that are going to measure your reputation by external recognition of your reputation by these nationally recognized awards. So there is a lot in this update there's a lot more to it that is just the first few of the updates um, and if you read the guide that comes out of just the first 20 or 30 pages out of what is a 200 something page document there's a lot in here so maybe we'll have more analysis in video on that you could always read the post that goes along with it so thanks for watching see you next time